When you think about contaminated properties that have been vacant a long time, you might imagine an abandoned factory. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The scope of contaminated or potentially contaminated land, known as brownfields, is even bigger. Abandoned gas stations, car repair shops, dry cleaners, vacant lots with illegal dumping, and even abandoned residential homes built before 1989 are all examples of brownfield properties. Before brownfields can be reused, communities need to ensure they're safe through environmental assessment and, if they're contaminated, clean them up. Many different entities can redevelop brownfields, including private developers, state and local governments, nonprofits, land banks, or multiple partners working together. And though every project is different, the brownfield remediation and reuse process typically follows four steps. First, conduct a phase one environmental site assessment to determine if previous activities on the site could indicate contamination. The definition of brownfield includes both confirmed and potential contamination. For example, reviewing ownership and environmental records of an abandoned facility might indicate proper storage and disposal of hazardous substances and the site needs no remediation. If the investigation suggests contamination, the second step is to conduct a further investigation. A phase two assessment can confirm the existence of contamination and determine the extent of the pollution and what cleanup is needed. The third step is cleanup. How much cleanup depends on how much contamination there is and how the property will be reused. Once the site is cleaned up, the property can be redeveloped. These steps happen in order, but complications may emerge. You might come across new contaminants during the building process and need to change your approach. Good planning and thorough assessments at the start can reduce delays and challenges. This all might sound intimidating and raise concerns around costs, time, and liability. But the benefit of transforming brownfields is the tangible improvement of a community's physical, economic, and environmental health. Fortunately, there are many resources available to address brownfields. The EPA and many state governments offer funding, programs, incentives, and technical assistance to eligible entities, including land banks, to plan, assess, and clean up contaminated sites. Federal and state laws exempt local governments from liability under certain circumstances. All across the country, these once harmful properties have been transformed into safe housing, parks, health centers, and even baseball fields. Because in the end, transforming brownfields isn't just about cleaning up contaminated land, it's about revitalizing communities so people thrive. <laughs>